Good morning. This is the CNF Working Group on Monday, February 28th, and we'll get started at five past the hour. So allowing about three minutes for other folks to join. Thanks, Lucina. Can you or someone else please share the document in the chat? I'm trying to get my computer to connect, but having a little trouble. All right. Let's see. So um, we can get started. Uh, I don't know if today is a holiday for some folks. I know the, well, we got a few more coming in. Hey, Tom. Hi, Ben. Hi, everyone. All right. So you can add your name and any topic you'd like to discuss to the meeting notes, which are 
posted in the Zoom chat. Great. I'll come back to the announcements once you've dropped them in, Lucina. So the, let's see, daylight savings time is starting in March, um, US on the 13th and Europe on the 27th. The meeting time will remain 1600 UTC. We've heard that that should be good for some people. It may not be as good for others, um, half the year, whoever. All right, uh, KubeCon EU, let's see. Cloud Native Telco Day. Um, CFPs are closed at this point for that. Uh, we did get quite a few um, sessions submitted. Those, will, those are in review. Sponsorships are still open for Cloud Native Telco Day, a co-located event. And yeah. All right. So the TAG Network CNCF um, Technical Advisory Group um, Network. <clears throat> We're looking for speaker around air gap deployments. They have a <clears throat> something um, going on this Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, if anyone's interested. And that's on their public Slack channel. All right. Um, well, I was planning on giving an update on CNF certification covering some things like categories and tests that we're looking at for the certification. I kind of feel like we should maybe wait until there's a, a larger group. Um, I mean, we can do it recorded, but do we have any other topics that someone wants to discuss? And Taylor, uh, I noticed that someone opened uh, an issue regarding uh, multiple interfaces. So I don't know if you want to um, talk about that or, or maybe we can wait also for a uh, greater audience or you need a number I, that I have here. Sure, number or blank. Um, be good. Is it an issue or pull request? Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's an issue. All right. Okay, um, so Daniel's not on the call today. I don't know his schedule if if it's going to be easier once the daylight savings time, but I anticipate it probably will um, be for him. I believe he's equivalent to Pacific time um, in Canada. Um, anyways, yeah, this one's a good one, and I see that you posted some stuff on it. I, it seems like this one might be able to be talked about in a more generic fashion. It's fine that it says multi-interface from now, but I know that um, with your experience with network service mesh, um, you know that we could talk about this in a different way. The requirements that Daniel's listing, I think are still valid even if you don't use multiple interfaces, the multiple interface is an implementation for a problem, a potential solution for a problem. 
So traffic segmentation, isolation, performance, um, you know, that's maybe arguably a stronger one, but still there's potential ways of, of getting around actual interfaces. Hardware dependency, all right. Um, that one, this is how we did it in PNF, Venus, okay. Um, yeah, well, these are, I think, questions. Is this for, right, so this is good. Let's see, what else do we have? Yeah, I just, just mentioned the discussion that we have before uh, regarding this similar topic. Yeah. Yeah, this would definitely be one to pull con um, content from for the discussion. So one of the things, and you probably have um, recall this, have run into it, the reason for post-deployment interfaces, and I'm gonna drop interfaces and I'm gonna say connections. The reason why you may want to add a new connection to an existing pod is, um, and it, well, I'll give one example. One example would be, um, if you have a set of pods that are running, providing a service together, they work together in concert to provide some larger service. And then you have one of those pods die for whatever reason, and it could come up somewhere else. Or you may say, we need to scale it up. That would be a, a related one. And you need to then connect from one of those pods or maybe multiple pods to the either newly deployed one or a um, maybe you're scaling up. So now you need connections to new pods that were not there before so that the communication can continue um, without having to redeploy all the other ones for network connections. Now, I think a lot of that's solved whenever the pods use uh, services and labels and, and allow help, let Kubernetes reconnect to wherever the new service is. But I think the problem comes whenever the, the services go beyond what the flat network provides and now you need the additional ones. So whenever it's outside of what would normally be there is when we run into situations where you're either gonna do it custom or you're gonna use something like it could be um, NSM or anything else that can dynamically um, insert new connections. Anyways, uh, lots of good things here, but what do we what do we want to do on this right now? We can uh, discuss it now. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> or, uh, I don't know. Uh, wh wh whatever. Like at least uh, maybe we can provide some feedback offline, or maybe mm -hmm. um, start preparing like um, PR or, or I don't know.
I think this one, um, this topic needs some user stories, use cases and user stories added. So that would be one area to have like a specific goal. We need to merge these, I think, under the doc directory. Um, I'm going to open up matrix um, doc here. Hey, Oliver. This one has some light use cases as well as user stories around uh, state. But something like this would be very useful for the problems that Daniel is outlining, you know, that people have raised. Here's, why are we doing it? You know, let's give some information on that. Uh, any other comments or thoughts for this right now? All right. I'm going to point right to the state document as an example. I think I'll tag. Daniel with this. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, other topics? Either I've opened the PR and based on what I showed you last meeting, okay, I incorporated Oliver's commands, opened the PR for security best practices and configurations. Uh -huh. uh, I'm, I'm open for comments, okay, I'm, I will start to work on the kubelet. I'm going to thank. Oh, you got it, Lucian. Thank you. Can you um, please add some information into the description of the pull request? Sure, I'll do.
do you want to give a quick overview um, and then right now and then folks can read more and and give comments offline so sure um so the general idea is that i want to create uh, a set of you know best practices documents around uh kubernetes core components okay um, and how to deploy them securely and what are the do's and don'ts um and you know i'm planning this to be a you know a series of 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 pages or, or even the same page a series of subjects. I've started with the API server and how to deploy API server in a secure way. Um, if I haven't, you know, touched something, you think that it's important, okay, I'm open for any comments or, you know, if you want yourself to add something, I'm, I'm fine with it. Um, I'm going to continue with the kubelet uh, deployment. And by the end, I want to have, you know, a set of best practices, okay, to, for, you know, for our um, on-prem deployments, you know, the kind of deployments we are working on, and usually not covered by others because all who's, who are using Kubernetes as a managed uh, uh, service, these are not things that they are usually dealing with. And um, therefore, I think it's important to cover it. Uh, this looks really good, Ben. Thank you. Um, so the, for those who haven't seen the best practice proposals, um, the idea here is to provide a whole lot of uh, context and information for anyone that's trying to adopt a best practice. You may already think a best practice is um, you understand it, you agree with it, you're ready to adopt. But you may be talking with a colleague that's not quite sure. So ideally, um, this will be content that will help in that. And there may be someone, you know, that totally disagrees. So we want to be able to communicate all that. So we have context um, that may go beyond what we see in other user stories, be uh, specific. We can reference user stories. And um, we want to be able to, one, one thing that you want to look at, Ben, um, that we'll want to add into this is some of the, um, so this looks like it's maybe the start of the idea here for the best practice. And as we get, as you get more feedback, we can iterate on it. What we'll end up wanting to do eventually is have, we want to cover all of these areas that are marked as required. Um, so just go through right here. So is it implementable? Um, is there, do we have a summary in the motivation? You're already providing a lot of that. So implementable, I think is looks like it, I didn't go through all the details, but it looks like those are covered. Do we have a way to test it? I think we're already covered on this specific one, but that's we just want to add that in there. Um, scoring is probably something we need to adjust off of here because that was early, early on. Um, yeah. The other ones, though, we have some things like non-goals are important to point out. If there's something that's out of scope, we don't want um, people to think we're covering everything, trying to cover everything. So. Um, this one, this is on the non route point out some things there. And then just what is the main proposal? So that's the summary area. Uh, mm -hmm. User stories, we normally just reference those. This one on the least privilege, we've been pointing to a lot of the supply chain attack user stories. So if there's existing yeah. user stories, feel free to reference those. We don't have to and this isn't just for you, Ben, this is for anyone that's trying to propose, that would like to help propose a best practice. If, if we already have a user story that works, then you can reference existing ones. If we need a new one, then we can work on those. 
ideally the user stories are general enough that they can work for many best practices. Of course, if there's one that's very specific, that's fine. You can inline it, just put it right in there. Um, and then another thing to point out is when we're doing something, what are the cons? What are the trade-offs? When you're choosing a, to implement a best practice, you're hoping for benefits, which you know, we're gonna list, but there's also potentially problems and we wanna make sure that those are communicated. Okay. Um, and then you can see here, the other thing that we have is we try to put references. So this is beyond what we have in the working group, potentially. I mean, this one, we do have some uh, discussions at the top and if we had a best practice around network interfaces or um, connections or something, we would probably reference the issue that um, Victor mentioned earlier. We'd go to the discussion and stuff like that, but we also reference other documents like the Tag Securities white paper. Um, there's the, I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in here. Um, well, I'm not seeing it, but the security um, recommendation that that ARMA references for CubeScape in a lot of, of uh, the work that y'all do. So we wanna put those in there so that people see, why is this important? Why do I need to know? Um, why should I be recommending this? We tell them about it and then we back it up with even more information. So this, all of this in the working group is to help people have more confidence and give more strength to the idea of these best practices, which often, and I will say like the one that you're working on, maybe, uh, I, I went away from it. The one that you're working on, Ben, a lot of people may agree, but we wanna make sure and back it up with as much as possible so that if people have context from wherever they're coming, an understanding of why it's important. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, eventually, um, what we'd like is to put the, put the proposal over in this directory, by the way. So, okay. And you sure. can see the format. We have some templates and there's a, a few practices in there. We'll want more in there. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions or comments for Ben right now? All right. There's nothing else, then I guess I'll go ahead and give an update on the CNF certification. All right. I'm going to kind of move through some of this, try to go a little quicker. Let's see who else is maybe joined anyone. So I think everyone on the call is at least familiar with um, the notion of the certification that's going to be coming out. Um, so the certification is going to be launched um, by KubeCon EU officially. Um, another open source program. Uh, 
from LF slash CNCF lack the Kubernetes certification, we want it to be as self-service as possible. And its focus is on cloud, the cloud nativeness or how well networking applications are following cloud native best practices. So we're specifically focused on applications that are in those workloads. Um, the CNF test suite is what's going to be used for the certification. These are the categories where all of the tests reside. Um, cloud native principles overlap into multiple categories. These categories are primarily to help us as humans to just focus in on one area. Um, we realize there's overlap, but these apply to the areas that we've been hearing about for years with um, problems and concerns, lifecycle onboarding of the CNS, this networking applications, um, reliability of the overall services, and how do you approach that in a cloud native way? It's not that it's not being done. It's how do you do it in Kubernetes in the most effective way? How do you make things uh, easier to be interoperable between multiple vendors when you're a integrator, integrator, whether that's external or directly within a communication service provider that's running these applications to provide larger services. So that's what all of this is about. Um, the test suite is leveraging a lot of upstream tools to do this. Um, so if if you want to contribute and you're familiar with any of these, then it helps. Uh, Cubescape including. Thanks, Ben. Over there. We got a lot of stuff around security and other things. And we've been getting contributions from all over. And I consider this a, a, a snapshot, but we have contributions, a lot of contributions, I think, that have gone in that aren't captured maybe in commit because someone was collaborating with someone else. Um, and I appreciate and would like to encourage any type of contribution, even if it's uh, working on a document or have, you know, having calls with folks to go over ideas and then um, it may end up with one person finally committing it, but we recognize those efforts. Um, I think everyone's aware of these, but we're here on the working group call, of course, but the contributor meeting, if you're interested in getting more involved on the technical part of the certification and the test suite, we have a call on Thursdays at 1415 UTC. And anyone's welcome to join that call um, to talk about how you're using the test suite or how you want to contribute new tests, updates, docs, whatever. And there are Slack channels for um, any of the initiatives that we're running, there's gonna be a public Slack channel on DNCF. So there's one for the working group, if you're not already aware, and for the test suite. Um, already mentioned Cloud Native Telco Day, but that's it. So. Just a quick overview. Does anyone have any questions? I wasn't muted, I hope. No, I'm, I think I'm good. Nope, I heard you, mate. <laughs> Sorry. Just All right, right. no problem. <laughs> Questions, Taylor, thank you. Sometimes you're you're muted and practicing. It'll be okay, I just have to do every day. Um, All right, so we have over 50 application workload focused tests in the test suite. Um, we've narrowed it down to a, a, 
a smaller set um, of tests that'll be used in the first iteration of the certification. I'm sure there's going to be multiple iterations as um, more tests come in and coverage. But the tests will be in all the different areas. Uh, we have an abundance in security and the reliability and availability areas. And we're continuing to add them into all of the areas. If anyone has ideas for tests, we would love to get feedback on that. So specific things to cover. Um, and that could strictly be like problem statements and we try to match it up. You could say this is a more specific area to test or here's some user stories or, or whatever and we don't have anything covered. You can see all of the tests that are in a release, available releases, if you go to the usage guide in the CNF test suite. Um, if I go down in the workload, you're going to see all the different individual tests. Um, there's categories. This is a compatibility category. You can jump into security. You're going to see those tests there, information about those. So if, if there's a category or specific area where you'd like to see some more tests and you have thoughts around that, then uh, please communicate them now or later. Uh, we also have a document um, that's maybe related to the work that's been happening in the working group around, I'll say, um, supplemental content that helps users understand. So the documentation, which is slower to build out because of, you know, we're doing a lot of effort to make sure we cover everything in the working group. Um, will eventually provide a lot of context and, and understanding. <clears throat> the, this document rationale is similar, uh, but a smaller subset around why we're doing a specific test, what is it doing and why are we doing it? It's a short snippet that we're trying to add for every single test that's used. And then I think what we'll probably end up with like if I probably non-root might be a good one. Um, well, we don't have much documentation there yet, but this could end up linking to the um, best practices and uh, um, in the working group, the documentation there. And similar to the one Ben that you're working on, I think we have gonna maybe have a harder time on this. There we go. There's a few things about APIs and stuff. So there could be a test that we end up here and we'll point it to that new uh, best practice documentation. All right. Uh, does anyone have any thoughts or ideas or anything right now? If you're interested in helping, let us know. Definitely could use help on the documentation side um, and driving in specifically to the tests that are there right now that'll be part of the certification um, and then ideas for new tests. Thanks everyone. I, we'll go ahead and stop here and, and we can pick up again next week if if you want to join us on the contributor call, again, that's 1415 UTC. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. Have Thank you. Good.